Should lighting manufacturer giant Aperture be worried? Lately, I've been checking out the Zheyun B500 video light, and being bicolor, 500 watt, and extremely bright, the B500 really seems to step on the toes of the more beefy offerings from the market leading manufacturers, such as the Aperture 600X Pro. So I wanna see if this stacks up. I'm gonna check out the features, the build quality, the user experience, the user interface, and just see if it's any good. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want below, no problem. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just take the time, if you haven't already, to reach down and hit that subscribe button. It really just um, makes a big difference to me and the channel and I thank you in advance. This isn't sponsored content, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from my Patreon go back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear away via uh, you know giveaways and if that's of interest do check it out it's all linked below onwards so cracking on with the features and as i mentioned in the intro it's 500 watts which to me puts it in a category of video lighting where it feels somewhat more beefy than a standard video light. In this case, 500 watts generates up to 19,200 lux. That's at 5,500 Kelvin and at one meter with the bare bulb and no reflector. And I can't help, but I really just want to compare that to some of the other bicolor lights in this sort of beefier wattage category. And as I mentioned in the intro, the prime candidate for this is the Aperture 600X Pro, which kicks out up to 16,060 lux. Again, that's bare bulb at one meter, and this time at 5,600 Kelvin, so really close. We have to talk about and compare the pricing side of things in just a bit, but for now, look at that. Now, I like to talk about brightness a lot in uh, my video light reviews, and a comment that I get a lot is, why do you need that much power? I just don't get it. With a slightly accusatory undertone, and I can see how people might think that, but for me, bright lights are a, a really um, useful tool for filmmaking, and I'd say, in my case, essential, and that's for a couple of reasons. Reason one, simple. Diffusion, lots of it. The more diffusion you use, the softer your light gets, but the more power you need. Secondly, depth of field. When you have to stop down and need lots of light power. When I do uh, the B-roll for when I'm shooting, you know, product B-roll for this channel, it's just not the time for shallow depth of field. I'm usually at F18, so I need a really bright light. I also like to shoot a lot of macro video, and the closer we focus on subject, the less depth of field we have. So again, I want to be using tiny apertures, ideally F22. As for the color accuracy side of things, you know, like TLCI and CRI, I am now ignoring these stats because to be honest, they are painfully outdated. My preference is SSI, which is Spectral Similarity Index, but that is not available in the specs with this product. But instead we have my secondary preference, which is TM30, which checks your light source against 99 color samples, whereas CRI checks it against eight. Go figure. There are two main types of TM30 reading. There's RF, which is the similarity to that 99 color index that I mentioned, and RG, which compares the saturation versus that index. With RF 94 on average and RG 101 on average, definitely more reliable than CRI and TLCI. The B500 has 13 effects like bad bulb, flashlight, candle, and of course, lots more. I don't often find myself using these modes, but they are nice to have and I have used them before. One thing I noticed that the B500 doesn't have is a music mode where the light will react to sound sources and then trigger. And um, it's a really cool thing and I think it doesn't have it because, you know, this is an all-in-one unit whereas uh, lights that do have this, like the G300 and G200, have separate light and controller modules. So that's probably why, and I think, you know, they pack it, they pick up the, uh, the sound from the controller unit. So that I suspect is the reason. Um, so yeah. The cooling system for the B500 is really well designed. Air is sucked in from the sides and the rear, and then the hot air that's accumulated within is blown out from the top. It's extremely efficient and very quiet. I actually never notice any kind of noise from this in use. 
in stark contrast to lights I've owned in the past. I don't know how they've managed it, but it's great. I recently reviewed Zhiyun's G300 light, which is 300 watts, quel surprise. It's also whisper quiet in normal mode, but that has a pretty cool feature where you can overclock it to 500 watts. In that mode, it's actually brighter slightly than the B500, but as soon as you kick it in, you'll notice some, some fan noise. And after a little while in sort of relatively warm conditions, it will start to get quite noisy because, you know, it's a lot of power for a small unit to deal with. With the B500, however, it's always at 500 watts and it's quiet regardless of what you do. And um, that's something that really separates those two products. Here's a little sound sample if you want it. really uh, whisper quiet. Of course it has a bounds mount and to have anything else these days would be done. And I love all of the really kind of cost effective uh, light modifiers and diffusers that you can get for a bounds mount. I'm partial to light domes and I've been using ones from Aperture and recently Zhiyun's own domes, which are equally good, but cost slightly less, and I love a bargain. Moving on to build quality, and you get quite a bit of plastic, so there's that. I'd prefer more aluminium, of course. It definitely doesn't feel cheap, but this is clearly not a professional grade, ruggedly built unit that you can just throw around in all weather conditions, but definitely not bad at all. I really like the size of the B500. It's kind of shockingly small. And you know what, I'll put the dimensions just here if you're interested, and they are um, including this handle. So it actually feels even smaller than these suggest. The B500 weighs only 2.8 kilos, so it's actually extremely small and light, especially when you consider its power. To put this in context, the Aperture 600X Pro is over five kilos just for the light unit and the control unit is just under five kilos, so a pretty big difference. It has a chunky handle and actually a really decent mounting system. I feel like for so long it was kind of acceptable for the mounting systems to be cheap and flimsy, you know the kind. Luckily, it's been a while since I've seen any like that and this one is solid albeit mostly plastic with a good light stand grip. Moving on to the user interface and user experience side of things, and the B500 has an on-off switch, a simple display, and two dials. That's it. One dial is for brightness, and the other is for changing color temperature. The problem with the controls being on the unit itself is if you hoist it up high, the controls are inaccessible. The last thing you want to do is, you know, to hoist it up there and go, oh, I need to adjust it. So, you know, if you bring it down again and make an adjustment, send it back up. It's not ideal. Luckily, Zhiyun have some solutions for this. Firstly, there's an optional wired controller sold separately that you can get, which works with all of the B series lights and is pretty inexpensive. The other option, of course, is to use Zhiyun's ZY Vega app, which you can get for your phone. I have to say the user experience is greatly improved by using this. And uh, it's kind of Zhiyun's equivalent of something like, you know, Aperture's uh, Sidus Link. Lights pair pretty easily just using Bluetooth and you can control multiple units. You can set up presets. You can change all of the controls. The only thing I noticed is you can't access the uh, effects from this, uh, from the app. So you'd have to actually use it from the unit that I can see anyway, correct me if I'm wrong. I also wanted to note that whilst the ZY Vega app works well, it does tie up your phone. And I don't know about you, but personally, I often need my phone for other duties. And it's just a, just an observation. But anyway, let me show you what the B500 can do. So to demonstrate the brightness side of things, I've changed my key light to the B500. I've switched my fill light off and I've left the exposure on my camera the same. Now during the video, I had my key light, which was the G300, set to 50%. As you can see, we're nearing 30% and this is already brighter than I would like my key light to be when you compare it to, say, the Edison bulb in the background. And everything 50% and above is just becoming quite blown out. And really, this is quite a good demonstration of how bright this thing is. I'd say we're into the territory of this being a light that's 
brighter than most people need. So this is going to be an incredible light if you need to use lighting outdoors that can kind of compete with the sun. As for the value for money and, you know, alternative options, when you start to compare the B500 to the other offerings on the market, it starts to look like an insane bargain. Let me show you. So just for context, the B500, as I mentioned, 500 watts, it kicks out over 19,000 lux, and UK right now, time of filming is 720 pounds, and there it is in dollars and euros. And then perhaps the brand leader at the time of filming, which I would say is the Aperture 600X Pro, now this is 600 watts and kicks out 16,060 lux and at the time of filming is 1,850 pounds. So quite a step up in price, quite a step down in terms of brightness. Of course it does have other features which people may find useful such as some battery options. If you're tied into Sidus Link then that may be a draw as well. And then as for other options there are a few but the one that stood out to me as an obvious contender is the small rig RC450B. As the name suggests this is 450 watts but kicks out 18,900 lux which is not bad at all but when you look at the price it is about 30% more than the B500. Just a note on brightness I actually always use one meter measurements with bare bulb, no reflector, because companies like to publish their brightness figures with a, with a hyper reflector. And that's because it greatly accentuates the actual figure and not all hyper reflectors are equal. And I don't think that's fair. So how can you trust those readings when companies use hyper reflectors? I say you can't. And that's why I like to have consistency across my reviews. And that's why I use bare bulb at one meter. Keeping that in mind, let's look at the Lux per dollar. I know we're switching currencies, but for the majority of my audience, uh, let's see how they go and see what we get for your money in terms of brightness. So first up, of course, we have the Zheon B500 and at just $579 and over 19,000 Lux, this comes in at a measly three cents per lux that's insane value the 600x pro comes in at 1691 dollars and with just over 16,000 lux this is a terrible 11 cents per lux that is abysmal value for money and the small rig somewhere in between it comes in at six cents per lux which is fairly fair the only differences i can see in those products really are build quality fair enough there are some battery options and then there's the software side of things, you know, Aperture with their Sidus link. Otherwise, the B500 looks like clearly the best value of those with the small rig as the close second. Anyway, now it's time for my pros and cons and we'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. This is an excellent performing light. The brightness to weight and size is just unbelievable. The value side of things is kind of just out of this world. If you need a super bright light, look no further. I also think the design of this unit deserves lots of credit. It's all in one, it's small, it's lightweight and super convenient to use. These could all be separate points to be honest, but let's just call it design. This thing is quiet even at max power. I have just returned from doing two days filming using the B500 as my key light and I had it pretty cranked all the time and it was hot, it's summer right now, and I couldn't hear it the entire time. I've got no noise that's come through on the mics. It's been amazing. Then there's the ZY Vega app, which does really improve the user experience side of things for this light, particularly as those controls when you hoist the light up on a stand are inaccessible. And onto the cons, and that's the first one, inaccessible controls when you hoist it high on a stand. This is just notable for people who really don't want to use the app. In that case, I really would suggest getting the controller. It's seriously not expensive. I think it's around 40 or $50. It's a good option if you don't want to use the app. I would say the user experience of the controls when not using the app is kind of clunky. I'd prefer maybe one or two more buttons, but like I said, I tend to use the app. This unit is mains only. It's worth mentioning that because a lot of people will have liked the option to use some sort of battery option. If that's you, then, you know, this could put you off buying it. Finally, onto my opinion of the B500, and I'm kind of blown away. You know, it's not, it's not a small amount of cash to spend on anything, but for what it costs, 
the sheer performance that you get is just staggering. Pair that with its weirdly out of proportion size to power ratio, and this becomes a really intriguing offering for honestly, most video guys. It's likely more powerful than most people will need for a normal powered key light, like this one for example, but you know what, it's not, it's no bad thing to have more power on tap. I can't help but compare the B500 to the G300, which I reviewed recently and I'm using as my key light right now, and the reason for that is, yes, you know, it's a 300 watt light, but it does have that 500 watt overclocked mode. In that mode, the brightness jumps up to over 20,000 lux, so very bright, but like I mentioned earlier in this video, it does have limitations. You know, it gets noisy with the fan noise, and if it gets too hot, it'll just switch back to normal mode. The G300 is also a lower price than the B500, but, if it's my money, I'm saving up for, I don't know, a month or two extra just, you know, to spend that little extra and I'm going with the B500 just because it's it's natively 500 watts and it's very comfortable being that. Whereas the G300, it feels like it's you know, working a lot harder to get there. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? Do you own the B500? How has your experience been different to mine? I wanna hear from you down in the comments and I'll be down there as much as I can. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.